Apologies for the wavy lines on the video. Uh, it's an artifact of this LED flashlight that I'm using. I'm assuming they're going to be there in the final video. I'm filming this on a phone, and I can see it on the phone, so I'm assuming it'll be in the final video. I am trying to print PETG on my Prusa MK3S. I made at least five videos prior to this as I was printing a piece related to this one, but not quite as big, and it didn't use any support material, which all that in front of the object there is support material because it angles up off the bed right there. Um, my problems printing PETG are it will not stick to the bed and I'm getting blobs of filament on the nozzle. Now if you go online and look up how to print with PETG you find a lot of people with a lot of different opinions on how to get PETG to work right. One thing you see a lot of is that PETG sticks so well to a PEI bed that it's hard to get off. And then you see people like me who are like, no, I have the exact opposite problem. I can't get PETG to stick worth anything to a PEI sheet. This is the textured PEI sheet from Prusa that I'm printing on right now. And yeah, the, the print would just lift off and start to curl as I was laying down the first layer. So I went through a bunch of online suggestions. Um, increase the nozzle temperature, decrease the nozzle temperature, increase the bed temperature, decrease the bed temperature. Print it slower, print it a little bit faster. All kinds of settings that I changed and eventually I was able to print this piece which is a companion to the one that's printing. It goes on the other side of R2-D2's drive, foot drive unit. It did not use supports because it's not beveled. It's flat on the end, both ends, whereas the piece it's printing now is beveled on this end with the uh, square holes. So I did eventually get this to print, but I had to babysit it a lot during the first three layers before it started doing infill because of dropping blobs on the print. And then if the nozzle hit the blob, the blob would get bigger, or it would lift up the area, or, yeah. So I thought I had set extrusion multiplier lower. So one of the reasons why it would blob is it's pushing too much filament through the nozzle. Um, I'm thinking now that I changed that setting in the wrong place, or I forgot to save it, because I found a guide, another guide on the internet, uh, from 3D Newbie website, and he had his settings listed for the Prusa printer for how he's getting PETG to print. And I copied his settings and my extrusion multiplier was set to 1. So he said go 0.5 less than your PLA setting. Well, my PLA setting is 1, so I was extruding PETG at the same flow rate as PLA. Instead of knocking it back just 0 0.5 to 95, 0.95 instead of 1, I went to 0 0.9 because I was having such big blobs and they happened fairly frequently that I figured I would, I would just go not point nine and see what happened and I've still got a little tiny bit of blobbing just a tiny bit there's a little bit in the support material again sorry for the wavy video I don't know if you can pick it up and then some of the square holes I noticed a little bit of blobbing so I kind of cut them off with flush cutters um, pushed it down as it went through the next layer and went over the blob, pushed it down to mush it down so it didn't stick up so much and it seems to have so far, fingers crossed, um, allowed it to keep printing without getting any major issues. So the other thing that's dramatically different 
of all, and there must have been more than a dozen, at least a dozen settings that I changed to match this guy's setup. Um, the two that are most dramatic would be the extrusion rate, like I said, changing it from 1 to 0.9. The other one was speed. Everybody was saying, slow PETG printing down, slow it way down. This one, when I sliced it, <laughs> this part, the way I had my settings to successfully print the other part I just showed, um, with those settings, this piece was about a 35 and a half hour print. With the settings from the 3D Newbie website, it went down to 28 and a half. So about a seven hour drop in print time. And when it first started printing, it was going so fast, I was thinking, oh, there's no way this is going to work. This thing is going so fast, it's got to cause a problem. This, this is just so much different than everything I read about slowing things way down. So, and here we go with the support material. This is my biggest fear, is the support material, because support material... Yeah, and there goes a giant blob on my support material. Support material is really... Thin. and now it just is going to run over that yeah so that's going to be my main issue right now is the support material I'm going to have to cut that blob off if it doesn't run over it yeah again well maybe it'll knock it loose try to hold the camera Well, got the blob loose, so again, I still have to babysit it because of that support material. Now, that support material that I just cut off, I, it looks like I cut off that whole layer of the support material. So that might be an issue the next time it goes around. So I'm not out of the woods yet. But it is printing dramatically better, and not just the speed. I mean, this... This... Um, surface that I've got now is the best looking one by far of all the pieces I've printed. I've printed several smaller ones. The smaller ones printed really good and then as I started printing the larger ones that's when I started running into issues. So fingers crossed that this one is going to work. I have to go through my videos. I think I say fingers crossed way too much but <laughs> that's pretty much why I'm making these videos, things that uh, things that go wrong or look like they're not going to work or have an issue. Yeah, I can see a little bit of blobbing coming out there now too, so I might still have an issue with this piece, which is really going to suck because I'm not sure. The other thing I can do is, um, I'm not sure, I know I can pause a print. I don't know if I can pause a print, raise the z-axis to get the extruder in the air, clean the nozzle, and then continue the print. But what I can do is a filament change, which is basically the same thing. It'll pick the stop printing, pick the Z carriage, lift it up, and then I could, you know, it'll, it'll um, eject the filament. Then I can clean the blo built up blob off of the nozzle and then reload filament and continue on. Now, of course, it has the nozzle heated up that whole time. So the problem there is, because the nozzle's heated up the whole time, it's going to be extruding, slowly extruding filament. Not extruding, but it'll just be dripping out, basically, as it's past the melt point. So you'll still have a little blob that's created from the time you clean off the nozzle to the time the nozzle gets back onto the print and continues printing. But hopefully it would be smaller. So I deleted all those previous videos I made because this one was looking better than anything I've printed so far. But again, the support material looks like it's it's the big trick because it is so thin. If there's any blobs or anything, the support material is going to have a problem. Now the support material has a problem, then that part of the print might not work. Now that part of the print, at an angle, it 
as long as it, you know, if, if the first few layers that are angled aren't well defined, that's fine. They can be sanded and it'll be fine. It's not angled because it has to be precisely at that angle or size. It's, it's just that it needs it needs to have the angle on it so I can sand down any screw-ups and hopefully still save the piece. But I can see another blob there on the support material to the left. It looks like a gap above it too, so still not out of the woods. But for now this is this is the closest I've ever gotten, so we'll see how it goes from here. Here we've got two failed prints. This part that I'm trying to print in PETG. Every time I do it, it goes for a couple hours before I stop it. Uh, this one I put some wood glue trying to keep these support lines from failing, but PTG is sticky, so it starts picking them up. We're missing spots. And then the big problem is, because it's support material, the support material is supposed to break away from the main print. So what it's doing is as it's printing onto the support material, but it's not bonding to it, it just gets this really thin layer on the edge and eventually it starts warping up. I stopped that one because I saw between that and the failed supports that that wasn't going to work. This one I printed even longer. I was babysitting it. It was doing the same thing. I went to go get a sandwich and I came back and these had warped to the point where a bunch of filament got balled up and so I stopped that one. So I'm using the Prusa Slicer which is based on however you want to pronounce it, uh, SL Ice, what is it, SL3CR or SLIC3R, whatever. Um, and I figured what I need is the supports and the piece to be together, not have this bridging gap that shows up when I actually slice the part. It actually shows blue that there's a bridge between the part and the support. No, I want it all together. I don't care if I have to take a power sander to sand the support off. I want it, don't want filament floating in the air because it's it's gonna warp. So the other idea I had was to take the design into mesh mixer or something and instead of making it have an upward angle just make the piece flat on the bottom. And then just again with a power sander grind the angle off. Um, I thought I'd look into the slicer a little bit more before I try to do that because I didn't know a good way to do that since it's got a bolt, some bolt holes in it. Um, so what I ended up doing is forgetting my light here. I found a setting in the slicer that you tell it that you're using a soluble support material. And so it attaches the part to the support. So a soluble support material is just that. It's a type of filament that is like water soluble or alcohol soluble. So you basically wash your part when it's done and the support just kind of disintegrates away. Obviously I don't have that, but I don't care because what I want, you can actually see right here, the support structure there at the end, the part that's after all those uh, rectangles, 
is actually touching the rectangles. Slicing it without that setting, there's a gap there. So it's literally printing the large part of this piece and then it's printing the support material with a gap in between. And that's what's making it mess up. So after literally all day I've been trying to babysit this thing because it takes a couple hours before it fails. And I try to find some different settings. I try to make it slice differently. And I mean I've actually got PETG printing right now. It's just the supports that are messed up. So hopefully this one's going to work. That's what I said about the last four or five tries. But um, this one, there is no gap between the support and the part. It should just print right on top of the support. And if I have to use you know, 60 grit sandpaper on a power sander to sand off the excess, that's fine. It doesn't matter. The only reason why this piece is angled like that is because it fits, it fits inside R2's foot, which has an angle to it. So that's what that angle is, so it clears the foot, the outer foot that you look at. All the mechanics of the drive system is actually tucked up in the foot shell. So I still have another issue with support material. I went to a hexagon fill on my last print and that did a lot better. But support material prints really thin. So the whole point is to be able to take the support material off. So when I was just doing straight lines, left and right, X axis I should say. Um, they were failing because really thin lines, PETG kept going over and over it and it would break it free from that bottom surface right there. So I went to hexagon and that was doing a lot better but it still did have some issues. But I think I could have got away with it if it wasn't for that gap between the support material and the main part that was just making PETG literally just in the air. It wasn't it wasn't sticking to the support material. So here we go yet again. I don't know, this is my eighth or ninth try, I think, if you count the ones that didn't even stick right. But this this one just really hoping that this one works because if it doesn't, that's it for tonight, and then uh, my work week comes up, so I don't know if I'm going to mess around with it anymore. This is a 28-hour print, so even if it does work, it's going to go into my work shift, but that's all right. And then if I pan over to here, Motivo Tornado, I have part C of ring two. Uh, the last video I made, which I'll probably just tack this one onto it, I think I called this part E, the one that I had left to do, but it's actually part C. So when this one prints, that will be the entire ring two printed. This is the back door. So it is just following this shape until it's at the same height as the rest of ring two. So hopefully I won't have any issues there.